you're on. All right, so we went over the fiber cement shear and the guillotine. With those two, well, at least with the guillotine or the chop saw, you're still going to need a circular saw to rip and notch. So most commonly, you're going to see a circular saw with a fiber cement blade on it. This is a rigid saw that has a carbide fiber cement blade on it. It works pretty well for cutting one piece at a time. I wouldn't suggest that if you're a professional contractor. You can't stack cut. Uh, if you try, they, they don't work very long. The whole saw is a carbide tip. If you use a bimetal blade, it goes south pretty quick. You do need a carbide tipped or diamond tip blade for cutting in your light blocks or hose bibs. The jigsaw there, if you use a regular jigsaw blade, you probably get two inches before it goes through the teeth and through the shank. It's like running a grinder. Hitachi makes a carbide tipped jigsaw blade that cuts very well. Uh, those are tricky to find. You can also find the abrasive bits as well uh, for doing tile and some other stuff. Uh, if I'm going to be doing a big scroll or a half round, I'll try to find one of those Hitachi carbide uh, jigsaw blades. The abrasive ones create more dust and they're not quite as clean, uh, but we're doing a pinch. So any questions about the tools to safely cut fiber cement? Okay, let's go. I keep doing here. Okay, so here's some of the more common fiber cement blades. They have two types. You have a carbide blade and a polycrystalline diamond blade. Big difference in price. The PCD blade. 50 to 60 bucks, you can get the Marathon and the Diablo in a carbide version. They don't last very long. They go south pretty quick. This is a Malco version. Any of the fiber cement blades will work as long as you don't cut through the wood cutting tip. They'll cut fiber cement all day long. Once you start cutting wood trim or you start cutting through the cutting table, four teeth turns to three and to two, they don't cut so well. So make sure that that's elevated. I typically just run some runners on like a two by 10 or a two by eight, so I'm not cutting through there. It works pretty well. You can also hook a dust reducing saw up to a HEPA vacuum. They're a little cumbersome, so you probably won't see that a lot. If you're on a commercial job or you're a remodeler, it makes sense to control the dust for uh, not only your employees' sake, but for your customers as well. The section you want to hear about Brian. So my personal take on nail and siding is I like a siding nail versus a roofing. So the roofing nails, and I try to make it work because the roofing nails are harder to countersink. The kiss of death for fiber cement is countersinking the nail. Overdrive it. Overdrive it. So with the roofing nail, it's three eight, so it's harder to do that. But most of the guns shoot in sideways. They're not made for going through fiber cement. They're made for going through comp. So the nail goes in an angle, half of it countersinks and half of it's up. So I'm not a big fan of those. We have a limit of inch and a quarter of minimum embed into wood. So if you use an inch and three quarter inch roofing nail, that's the max you can go. If you put anything on there other than wood, home slicker, foam, the nail's gonna be too short. Inch and a quarter plus five sixteenths is an inch and nine sixteenths. So inch and a half wouldn't work. Got to be two inch nail. Got to be inch and nine sixteenths max, and the max they make for a roofing nailer is inch and three quarters. So they have a limit on that. Yeah. Um, I like the roofing nail because they're harder to overdrive, but they have limits as far as getting that minimum yeah, embed. Right. So we're showing the siding guns up here on top. They make quite a bit of them. I have a max gun with me today. Pass load. Senko. This gun here is a gun made for shooting in the metal frame. It's an ETNF, and that's the nail manufacturer. We currently don't have any testing for them, so you can strike that off the list. Um, if you're doing metal framing or you have a customer that's doing metal framing, talk them into using a screw. The screws have to be a rib bugle head, and I'll get to that in here pretty quick. The problem with the ETNF fasteners, and that's a it's a ballistic fastener. So it's made especially so it'll shoot into metal without flaring out the metal. The problem with the ETNF is you can't pull it if it's short and you can't snug it up with the nail because it breaks the well. So once you shoot it in there, that's all you've got. Whereas the screw sucks it up and it's much cheaper, two cents versus 10 cents. This is a $600 gun, the pins are 
very expensive. This Max gun is a high pressure system where you can use any fastener that's made for metal. Aerofast, ETNF, ITW, Jip Fast. That's a $800 gun and a $2,500 compressor. It's a very expensive setup. So if you're not doing metal framing every day, make sure you just get some cordless impact drivers and a rib bugle head made for fiber cement. And of all this stuff, the most important part is the hammer. <laughs> da -na -na -na. Do that again. That was brilliant. Da -na -na. <laughs> Da, 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 da. So you can do everything perfect installing fiber cement. One inch down into framing. If you don't get your hammer out, it'll be loose. The guns, because of this little attachment here, the flush nailer, they don't cinch anything up. So you can do everything perfect. Mark out your studs, one inch down, it'll still be loose. The only way you can get a good job is to get your hammer. So when I'm putting a piece of siding on, I just bang it with my fist. If it rattles, on the way back, I hit it with my hammer, it takes care of it 100% of the time. If you wait till you're coming down and you're doing that, it's, it's still going to rattle and it's going to lose. Fiber cement, if you put it on loose and it rattles, it will fall off the wall because it just gets worse. Once, once you start that wiggle movement, It'll break around the nail, so you need to cinch it up, and that's so as simple as getting your hammer. One inch down on the board, and then how much clearance into the stud or into the wood? In, inch and a quarter into wood, and I should go over that here. We'll go over that twice, but that's pretty important. Right. That can include structural sheathing, okay. half inch plywood or 716 OSB. So if you didn't have that, maybe you had gypsum or you had some other non-structural, you'd have to be inching a quarter into the stud. But if it has that sheathing, that can be part of that embed. Okay. And uh, we'll go into that in detail here pretty quick. So make sure you use a smooth face hammer on there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, the ETF, can, can you direct nail to uh, concrete or block walls? With, the, with, the, Florida. with the E90, you can. It's, right. it's a different gun. Right, different gun, but you can nail direct to right. concrete block. Or it's, pretty, it's pretty weak wind load value. With anything, CMU or concrete, it's way better to shoot those, the furring on with that. Right because with, especially with cinder block or CMU, it, it falls out, very hit or miss. Uh, whereas if you can just use the, the strapping, it works out better. Any questions about the guns? Okay. So I'm showing here is the Big Sky adapter, basically a nail placement. We've got one on the table here, but where is it? better to show it here. Okay. So what this does is this makes it a lot easier for me to get perfect nail placement. In the old days we used to say three quarters of an inch to one inch. If you read our instructions now it says one inch. So if somebody doesn't want to pay you and you're seven eighths and they want to replace stuff, this is perfect every time. I can do this blindfolded. Siders don't make a lot of money so they work in the dark a lot. This is easy. You're stretching out on a ladder. Perfect nail placement every time. And that's going to be part of your giveaways. Uh, we're going to get that in. Uh, so I'm not sure what the value is, but uh, if you want to have some of those with you to they're, hand out to an installer. They're, they're, they're $16, $20. Yeah, so, you know, so that'll take up Installing a little bit bigger well. part of your budget. Yeah. Guys, I'll tell you, pine nailing is one of the biggest problems. It's huge that we see. In high nailing and overdriven nails. Overdriven, high nailing, what's that? Just, cause oh, just high nailing. Just higher than that one yeah, higher than that one inch. So the higher you get, the closer it actually the hinge. So and it's not so much breaking, it just it doesn't put as much pressure on the board. What kind of you kick out? You get kicked. It's really loose. If you do stuff, one of those kick -outs. you call the kick out, you don't get your wind load, because it's tested and all the nails driven at one inch. Well, and it's tested with the nail proud in the framing, which you typically aren't going to see. This is going to eliminate one of the biggest things, high nailing, but the even bigger thing is to not overdrive the fastener. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you overdrive a fastener in fiber cement is it pushes the product out the back. Of it. So even, and this is the real key difference between us and Hardy, is that Hardy shows that you can flush the nail out, we're showing it proud to the surface. And we show it that way because that's how it was tested. And all those wind load values you see in that report were tested with the nail product. Everybody understand what that means? Proud, nail head. It means you can run your hand along it, you can feel the head of the nail. Yeah. It's not, flush. it's not flush with the surface. Okay. 
Let's see how I got a picture. Hey, um, food's here? Yeah, food's mm -hmm. here. So let's let everybody grab a plate. Okay, and I'm going to. And then be quick and talk. Yeah. Talk.